I had previously upgraded to Windows 10 TH2 from Windows 7 Service Pack 1 using Windows Update. However, this changed my language from English UK to English US, so I decided to roll back. To correct this issue, I'm going to upgrade using the Windows 10 TH2 media creation tool. So I need the Windows 10 ISO and I'll just select download tool now and I'll just select save. And then I'll select run and I'll select yes at the user account control prompt. So say so getting a few things ready. And if I select next and upgrade this PC now, it will make the same mistake and give me English US again. So I'll need to select make installation media for another PC. And as you can see, it's automatically checked English United States again. Now I want to change this from English United States to English United Kingdom. So the Windows edition is Windows 7 Professional and actually all Windows 7 editions will use the Windows 10 ISO. The relatively rare Windows 7 N editions, so any of the Windows 7 editions with an N at the end of it, will use the Windows 10 N ISO. The architecture must match what you have in system, so in most cases this will be 64-bit. And I prefer to save the ISO file because sometimes the media creation tool might not make the USB stick correctly. So if you've got the ISO saved, you can easily make another USB from the ISO opposed to downloading everything again. So it will take some time for the Windows 10 media creation tool to download Windows 10 setup files. And then it will check them and then it will create the ISO. And then it will instruct you to burn the ISO to a DVD, which is complete nonsense. So just ignore this and select finish. One of the biggest problems with Windows installation is when people download an ISO and they burn the DVD incorrectly. Moreover, most modern systems are shipped without an optical drive, so burning a DVD is problematic. Also, installing from a USB is faster and it's more reliable. It's faster to copy the files to the USB and it's faster to copy the files from the USB. And also, if you're using a UEFI BIOS, you're going to want to use a USB. So we're just going to download a program called Rufus. And the first thing we're going to do is load the ISO. And we're going to check that our USB is loaded as the device. And we're just going to select Start. Now the partition scheme we're using is GPT partition scheme for UEFI. Now for an older computer you might want to change the partition scheme to MBR partition scheme for UEFI bias or legacy bias. In this case it doesn't matter what partition scheme you're going to use because we're simply going to go to computer and we're going to left click on the USB and begin the Windows setup from it i.e. we're not going to boot from the USB. However, if you want to use this USB as a backup for reinstallation of Windows 10 should something go wrong, you'll want to select the correct partition scheme. So once we launch the setup, it'll prepare and then it'll ask us if we want to download and install updates. So I'm just going to leave download and install updates recommended checked and I'm also going to tick I want to help make the Windows installation better. So this will send some feedback back to Microsoft in the background. And now it will check my PC 
and then it will get a few things ready. It will take me to license agreement screen, so I'll just select accept. Now it will check for the updates. And now I'll get a warning that my display language is going to be changed. For Windows 7 installation, English contain both English US and English UK. So what happens is essentially that Microsoft assumes that you want English US even if you set your default settings to a UK keyboard and a UK time format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select OK and acknowledge that the language pack is going to be changed from English to English UK and then I'm going to select next and now the installation of Windows 10 will proceed. So you'll just see installing Windows 10 and then you'll see a percentage. So this screen it's got a different user interface but it's identical to the installing Windows 10 part from Windows Update. And now the rest of the install will be identical. So we'll see Windows 7 is shutting down. See a black screen for a moment. We'll see the Dell BIOS screen. And then we'll see another black screen. And then we've seen the loading files, like we did when we updated via Windows Update. And now we'll see the upgrading Windows screen. And it'll restart at 29% again, at 75% again, and then finally the upgrading windows will proceed until it reaches 100%. After it reaches 100%, we'll get the same options we did when we upgraded from Windows Update. So here I'm just going to select my account and then I'm going to select next and then I'm going to select use express settings and then I'm going to select use Cortana and then I'm going to select next and if you're very observant you'll notice that finalizing is spelled correctly i.e. it's spelled the British way with an S and not the American way with a Z. So you'll see the final steps of installation until we're on the English UK Windows 10 TH2 desktop. So we'll get the exact same series of notifications that we got before about apps being no longer available. So some of these will be replaced by inbuilt Windows 10 functionality. Others we'll need to find a driver for. Now we can look for a Windows 10 driver, but not all of these will have Windows 10 drivers. So we can simply just reinstall the Windows 7 driver. So you should notice that this time the date format is correct, that it's English UK by default. The keyboard will also be English UK by default. And what I'm going to do is right click the start button and select system. And just check that Windows 10 TH2 Pro has reactivated. And yes, we see Windows is activated. So that's the successful upgrade to the proper version of English, i.e. an English UK 
upgrade from a Windows 7 English installation. And finally, what I'm going to do is just right click the desktop and I'm going to highlight the word personalize. Now, if personalize is spelled with an S, this display language is English UK. If personalize is spelled with a Z, it's English US. As you can see, mine's is spelled with an S, so I'm happily on English UK.